How's it going? Good? Okay. Um, value can only be created when an organization and its stakeholders have a good relationship, right? Therefore, collaborative organizations must look for a governance model that integrates its stakeholders in accordance with their organizational needs. This is what I'm trying to, I'm going to try to demonstrate today with you. So, oops. Okay. So since December, I've been interviewing over 40 collaborative businesses and nonprofits in France um, as a material for we share a study co called governances. And what I want to do to, with you today is to share three of these examples to show that uh, companies in the field can be really creative in tailoring decision-making processes in order to better integrate their stakeholders. But before I move into concrete examples, let me go just go back to a few key terms that I've used. Otherwise, you're gonna get confused. <laughs> so first of all, what do I mean when I talk about collaborative organization? It's not as mainstream a, t a term that we might believe here at WeShareFest. <laughs> so for me, a collaborative organization is really an organization that relies on external stakeholders or contributors to provide the service that it offers to its end users. So it means the resources used, uh, the products made, the services offered, are not provided by the company itself, but by all of the, all the network of contributors around that are, as a consequence, contrib contributing crucial value to the organization. So for example, you all know that Blah Blah Car doesn't own the cars that it allows people to rent, right, or to use. Uh, Airbnb doesn't own the flats that it allows you to rent, right? And even a nonprofit like uh, Accorderie in Canada and in France, it's a time bank, and it relies on its network of members to exchange services between each other, like uh, English classes or uh, babysitting. You'll note that I've used uh, contributors and stakeholders basically as synonyms to describe those individuals that contribute value to the organization while staying at the periphery, outside of the legal boundaries of the, of the organization. That's really the key. Okay, and then I've used, sorry, I've used the term uh, governance as well, which is a big term, very loaded ideologically. And what I mean by that is that basically today we don't have an appropriate word to describe the relationships between those distributed contributors and the collaborative organization they work with. Right? So I'm using that term to describe the quality, the nature of those relationships. Let me move now into those three examples that you're all dying to, <laughs> to discover. So France Barter is a French startup and it's a business to business barter uh, platform. So basically it means that companies can uh, make available unused resources like you know, a fab lab, a printing shop, um, corporate offices, uh, they can make it available for other companies to use on a platform. And the interesting thing about this is that it's a credit system. So that means that uh, whenever you make a uh, resource available, you have a credit and you can borrow another resource. But that's very risky. So if Friends Barter fails tomorrow, that means you'll have lost your investment, basically. You'll, you'll, you'll have gained nothing in exchange for the resource you made available. And in order to respond to that problem, what Franz Barter did is they basically was, or set themselves up as a co-op. Why as a co-op? First, let me describe uh, the way it works very quickly. So it's, it's a SIC in French, for those who know. Um, and the way it works is that there, is, there are uh, five councils. So uh, you can have the, the, the members of the, of the councils here. It's not the most important. The most important is to understand that the cooperative for Friends Barter is a way to be transparent because obviously you're legally bound to be transparent about your financial assets, your, financial, uh, your financials basically, and uh, your operations, your strategic decisions. So the members can trust the startup because it knows where it goes basically. And then there's also trust between the members because as members of, the co of a co-op, they, al they always have to meet on a regular basis in order to vote on the decisions, right? So that creates mutual trust between the platforms and the members. And that's how 
France Barter enables its new kind of circular service to actually exist. Moving on to my second example, which is a different case, more flexible. So Mon Petit Voisinage, I'm going to call it MPV for the sake of the non-French speaking. MPV is a neighborhood social network that allows you to do two things, basically. So the first thing is that you can um, relate to each other in a given uh, area, individual, individuals, right? And the second thing is that you can uh, access any collaborative service you want. So like uh, you want to, I don't know, uh, share a car or access local food. You can all find those collaborative services on the same platform. And uh, this is a huge ambition because MPV is very ambitious. It wants to cater to as many communities as possible on a, on as many, uh, in as many regions as possible. In order to do that, they rely on a network of ambassadors that are volunteer. So these uh, ambassadors are people, members of the communities, okay, that are uh, basically, they believe in the values and the objectives of the startup, and they, uh, they represent and they nurture the communities. But because they are volunteer, how does MPV sustain and reward those ambassadors? A good way that they found to reward them is to have them represented formally in their decision-making body. They have a strategic committee, which has five stakeholders in it. So there's external experts, there's uh, one, one representative of employees, uh, founders and investors, and one ambassador. The ambassador is uh, invited to the committee on a rotating basis, because obviously you're not going to remain an, an ambassador for the rest of your life. So you're just selected at random, uh, among the community of ambassadors, and then you sit at the board, at the strategic committee, for one decision round. But what's interesting here is that there's another decision-making body. It's the board. Classic. Founder and investor together, and they decide on strategic decisions. The strategic committee is called strategic, but actually, it only decides on the uh, operational roadmap. So what that shows is that, obviously, as shown in many, startup, uh, many startups, um, most of the time, the contributors will be associated to the decision uh, on an operational level, but not on the strategic level. So that's the kind of the drawback of this model. But what it shows is that it's still possible to be fairly flexible, I'd say even original, um, in a startup environment to better integrate your stakeholders in accordance with your business needs. The third example, uh, I love it. Full disclosure, I'm, mem I'm a member of the board, so, okay, I love it. But it's, for me, it's really the future, so listen carefully. <laughs> what this is, is uh, it's called PractiShare. It's a non-profit, open-source, knowledge management platform. Um, so it allows you, basically, to share any solution on uh, any practical solution on given topics, such as sustainable development, or if you're part of an organization, you want to know, uh, you want to have uh, good rep recruitment pr you know, practices, or in between organizations, same thing. And the interesting thing is that the aim of practitioner is to be, let's call it a commons. Uh, so for those, who, those of you who don't know what that is, uh, this means that they want to be as light and void or hollow an intermediary as possible in order to avoid appropriation of the idea, the activities, and the value generated by the platform. So how do they do that? How do you exist today in France as a commons legally? They chose to be set up as an association because legally no one owns, no one has the right to own an association. You can't claim ownership over the financial assets or the ideas of an association, which is interesting. So that's the way they ensure uh, they avoid appropriation. Now, how do they ensure that you users, you can still have control over that intermediary as light as it is? What they do is they use full transparency, maximum transparency. So you can see uh, whatever's going on, whatever's developed on the platform through an online thread of information and news that you can access and comment. And you can um, kind of get a subscription on what you're interested in only. So you don't have to access everything. That's an important point. So that example shows, uh, well, obviously, there is a drawback, right? Because PractiShare is very young and, that, and nobody has, uh, has shown uh, s uh, like so far that commons actually deliver good quality services and that you can make a living out of it. 
So it's the most futuristic example, right? But what it shows is that you can, be, you can use a very light legal structure uh, in order to stay true to your vision, which is in this case control without appropriation. So these three examples, um, I hope, showed that uh, basically you, have, you can have different degrees of integration of stakeholders based on different priorities. So MPV, uh, MPV's priority is reward, France Barter is more trust, and practice share is really about transparency. But really, those models, obviously, they're not set in stone, right? They're going to evolve, they're going to be tested further, and there's many other models that exist. Yet, what I hope uh, this, sh this showed is that it actually already exists, uh, the fact of having a model and be coherent in achieving a, model, a governance model that can um, both integrate your stakeholders and guarantee organizational success. It goes hand in hand. I've only touched upon a very few dim dimensions on the, of governance, because governance Basically, it's a huge word, and uh, the relationships between contributors and the collaborative organizations, it touches upon and, and um, depends on many factors. So if you want to talk about that, come to me. And also, do follow up on the rest of the analysis that we've made. It will be, uh, it's full open source, as always in WeShare. So it will be uh, free for anyone to read. It's in fall this year. It's only in French for now, but I hope we're going to translate it afterwards. Thank you.